Hello friends, it is your creative weird makeup artist pal Kat and welcome to a brand new episode of Phantom Curiosities. It has been a while since we've done this series, but before we get started, if you guys like to support this channel even further, I do have an Amazon wish list down below. We also have a P.O. box where you can handwrite me letters and an Amazon live show. That's usually every Tuesday, sometimes twice a week. You can click the links down below to see the Amazon live show and everything that I mentioned here. But let's get started because today's Phantom Curiosities episode is about the history of elves. Especially during the holiday season, we've always heard folk tales and Christmas stories about Santa's little helpers and elves. They're magical, mysterious, and a little bit creepy. So let's get into it. Elves have been a popular subject in fiction for centuries ranging from William Shakespeare's plays A Midsummer's Night Dream to the classic fantasy novels of J.R.R. Tolkien's 300 years later. Probably the most famous of these magical creatures are the elves that work for Santa Claus at the North Pole. Like fairies, elves were said to be diminutive shapeshifters. Shakespeare's elves were tiny winged creatures that lived in and playfully fitted around flowers. English male elves were described as looking like little old men, though elf maidens were invariably young and beautiful. Like men of the time, elves lived in kingdoms found in forests, meadows, and hollowed out tree trunks. Elves, fairies, and leprechauns are all closely related in folklore, though elves specifically seem to have sprung from early Norse mythology. By the 1500s, people began incorporating elf folklore in stories and legends about fairies, and by 1800, fairies and elves were widely considered to be simply different names for the same magical creatures. As with fairies, elves eventually developed a reputation for pranks and mischief, and strange daily occurrences were often attributed to them. For example, when the hair on a person or horse became tangled and knotted, such elf locks were blamed on elves and a baby born with a birthmark or deformity was called elf-marked. Indeed, our forefathers trifled with elves at their peril. According to a folklorist, Carol Rose, in her encyclopedia, Spirits, Fairies, Leprechauns, and Goblins, in 1998, though elves were sometimes friendly towards humans, they were also known to take terrible revenge on any human who offends them. They may steal babies, cattle, milk, and bread, or enchant and hold young men in their spell for years at a time. An example of this was the well-known story of Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle being a short story by American author Washington Irving, it was published in 1819, follows a Dutch-American villager in colonial America named Rip Van Winkle who meets mysterious Dutchmen drinks their liquor and falls asleep in the Catskill Mountains. He awakes 20 years later to a very changed world, having missed the American Revolution. He thinks the men in the mountains are playing tricks on him because so much time has passed, his musket is rotting, his beard is a foot long, and he had a dog that's nowhere to be found. Modern Christmas tradition holds that a horde of elf workers throughout the year in Santa's workshop at the North Pole, making toys and helping him prepare for his whirlwind worldwide sleigh ride to homes on Christmas Eve. That depiction, however, is relatively recent. Santa Claus himself is described as a right jolly old elf in the classic poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas, or The Night Before Christmas, written by Clement Clark Moore in 1822. In 1856, Louisa May Alcott, who wrote Little Women, finished but never published a book titled Christmas Elves. The image of elves in Santa's workshop was popularized in magazines by the mid 1800s. In 1857, Harper's Weekly published a poem titled The Wonders of Santa Claus, which includes the lines In his house upon atop a hill, and almost out of sight, he keeps a great many elves at work all working with their might to make a million of pretty things, cakes, sugar plums, and toys to fill their stockings hung up by 
The Little Girls and Boys. Goody Lay's book, Another Influencer Magazine, featured an illustration in 1873 Christmas issue titled The Workshop of Santa Claus, which showed Santa surrounded by toys and elves. A caption read, here we have an idea of the preparations that are made to supply the young folks with toys and Christmas time, according to Rastad. Meanwhile, an editorial in the same issue addressed realities of toy making. They were not made by magical elves, but by poor foreigners. Whole villages engage in the work and the contractors every week in the year go round and gather together the six days work and pay for it. The idea of Santa overseeing a workforce of toy making elves played up the romantic version of American capitalism, according to Rastad. Santa reigned without opposition over a vast empire, truly a captain of industry. Rastad wrote with the usually nameless L standing in for largely anonymous immigrant workers. It's only recently that L's have been confined to plays, books, and fairy tales. In centuries past, belief in the existence of fairies and elves was common among most adults and children. The belief is still strong in some places. In Iceland, for example, about half of the residents believe in an elf-like being known as the Hodelfolk, hidden people or at least not rule out their existence. According to author D.L. Ashleham in the book Folk and Fairy Tales, a handbook, published in 2004, Eve was embarrassed that her children were dirty when God came to visit, so she hid them away and lied about their existence. God knew of her deceitfulness and proclaimed, what man hides from God, God will hide from man. These children then became the hidden folk of Iceland who often made their homes in large rocks. The supernatural beliefs are so strong in Iceland that many road construction projects have been delayed or rerouted to avoid disturbing the elves' homes. When the projects aren't first stopped by residents trying to protect the elves, they seem to be thwarted by the elves themselves. For example, in the 1930s, construction began on a road near Alf Hill or Elf Hill, the most famous elf residence in the city of Kopovar. I am probably pronouncing this totally wrong, but the construction was set to bring the road right through Alf Hill, which would have essentially destroyed the elves' homes. At first, construction was delayed due to money problems, but when the work finally began a decade later, the workers encounter all sorts of problems from broken machinery to lost tools. The road was subsequently rerouted around the hill rather than through it, according to the Vintage News. Later in the 1980s, the same road was set to be raised and paved. When the workers reached Alhof, and were about to demolish it, the rock drill broke into pieces. Then the replacement drill broke as well. At this point, the workers were spooked and refused to go near the hill because the city is protected as cultural heritage. Icelandic laws were written in 2012 stating that all places reputed for magic or are connected to folk tales, customs or national beliefs should be protected for their cultural heritage, according to the Iceland Monitor. Interestingly, however, accidental damage to elf residents seemed to come to light almost immediately. Over time and across different cultures, a certain type of elf emerged, one with a somewhat different nature, and from that formed the mischievous and diminutive spirits of yore. Some elves, such as those depicted in J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy are slender, human-sized, and beautiful with fine, almost angelic features. Tolkien's characters were drawn largely from his research into Scandinavian folklore, and therefore it's not surprising that his elves might be tall and blonde. Though not immortal, these elves were said to live hundreds of years. They have also become a staple of modern fantasy fiction. The creator of the game Dungeons and Dragons was not only influenced by Tolkien's elves, but also 
instrumental in popularizing them, even including elves as one of the characters' races, along with humans that many gamers could play. In either form, elves are strongly associated with magic and nature. As with fairies, elves were said to secretly steal human babies and replace them with their own kind. These changelings appeared at first glance to be human babies, but they became seriously sick or temperamental. Parents would sometimes suspect that their own child had been abducted by elves. There were even legends instructing parents on how to get their real child back from its elven abductors. Each generation seems to have their own use for elves in their stories. Just as leprechauns have historically been associated with one type of work, shoemaking, it is perhaps not surprising that many common and commercial images of elves depict them as industrious workers like Santa's elves or even the Keebler cooking baking elves. Folklore like language and culture is consistently evolving and elves will likely always be with us in one form or another. So that is concluding our history behind elves, whether it's Santa's workshop elves, Icelandic elves, the ones seen in Lord of the Rings or in Dungeons and Dragons, the Keebler elves, they are everywhere. Magical beings and folk tales of how they make our lives interesting, mischievous, and magical. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Phantom Curiosities. Leave me a comment down below on what you would love to see next. Subscribe for more videos every Monday and Friday. We post here not only beauty makeups, but effects videos, creepy tales, and body paintings. I hope to see you again soon. I hope you have a magical week and holiday season. See you later. Love ya. Sweet dreams. Good night. Bye.